Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to Championship Wrestling. For the next 60 minutes, sit back, relax, and watch proceedings from our arena ring. These matches are under the sanction of the State Athletic Commission. Your referee assigned by the commission tonight is Bob Winkle. This first match, already in the ring, is scheduled for one fall, 20 minutes. One fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first from Chicago, Illinois, at 229 pounds, Tom Jones. Tom Jones, Chicago. His opponent, from Edmonton, Canada. He weighs in at 275 pounds, Canada's greatest athlete and world's heavyweight wrestling champion, Gene Kaniski. There he is, Canada's greatest athlete, and your referee, Bob Winkle, Tom Jones of Chicago, Illinois, Kaniski's opponent, in this one fall match. It's interesting to note that the matches, 15 or 20 minutes, in the one fall category, when Kaniski is in that ring, seldom lasts more than about 11 or 12 minutes on occasion against a, a toughie. He has been known to stay in there with the man about 12 or 13 minutes. Jones is a pretty good wrestler, so we should see a lot of fine action here. There's a hip lock by Jones that puts Kaniski on the mat. One of the few times we've ever seen him taken back by an offensive move of an opponent. Side headlock. Someone wrote in and asked what the ring is covered by. Well, it's a canvas referred to as a tarpaulin or a mat cover. And uh, a very light layer of mohair padding underneath it just to keep the canvas from ripping on the three quarter inch plywood boards which make up the ring base. And those plywood boards are supported by two by eights and in some cases two by fours out at the edge of the ring for instance where very little beating is taken. And these posts are solid metal, four inch, and they are connected by cable. The cable runs through the ring ropes and also underneath the ring. These cables come to an intersection at the center of the ring. They're full taut. I mean, the ring ropes are full taut up above, and that's what gives the ring its stability. And for the most part, a wrestling or a boxing ring is constructed in much the same manner. So you can see the ring is quite durable. Kaniski. Makes a good test out of every corner and every inch of the ring because he runs his opponents from side to side, up and down, into just about every post and every rope available and accessible. So if it can hold up under a barrage of what he throws at it and what others of his size, such as Moose Chola, who incidentally is on the night's card, can throw at it, then you can see the ring is very capably built. These rings cost anywhere between two and three thousand dollars. The money tied up in it, and they have to be good for that price. Ooh, there's a knee right to the midsection of Jones. Puts him down. And Kaniski, who loves to use the foot, stays right on his opponent with this attack. It's entirely legal. The sole of that foot against the small of the back. And Jones, who is much the smaller comes off the rope into a knee and down to the mat again he goes as Kaniski steps on the head. Drags that foot right across the floor. Takes him up and down into a body slam there. You can see that ring didn't even give a bit. Not an inch. Well, he's going to be counted off. The referee starts that disqualification count. A chop right to the top of the head. 
Kenny and the small in the back. Now Kaniski outside the ropes and that count starts immediately. Two, three, and four. And he releases him in the count of four. Remember a five count for disqualification. As this man will resort to every inch of legality before conceding. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, he is a roughie. A choke old as he lifts Jones off that mat. And then slices a judo chop into the side of the neck. As the referee's disqualification count reached two, takes him up again. And again, the chop to the side of the throat. Jones, a bit of sporadic flailing of the legs there as he's back to his feet. There's a knifing right into the throat. And again, right into the side of the neck. It even hurt Kaniski's hand. And Winko reminds Kaniski to stay off the hair. Up again in the chokehold. This time, Jones got back at him. It looks as if he used an eye gouge. Comes up from the floor with a good solid right and uses a headbutt at center ring. And that has turned Kaniski back toward the ropes momentarily. There's another headbutt and down he goes. Jones stays right with him, but Kaniski, never to be outdone in that ring, again starts using those knees. A judo chop off the rope. Again off the rope. And we're seeing the beginning of the end, I believe, because Jones cannot take too much more of this. The flat of the foot into the chest. It's enough to cave in a chest of a normal man. Up he goes and down into the backbreaker. There's the man waiting to be pinned. Kaniski will not do it, though. Up again and down again. And the referee says, start that count. He will not do it. Up again. Down again. Across the back. Here, I think we have a pin. Two and three, and that's it. This one fall match is completed. It goes to Gene Kaniski in six minutes, 51 seconds. And we'll have more championship wrestling coming your way in just a moment. Here's the official time. Six minutes. 51 seconds, 6.51, your winner from Edmonton, Canada, the world's heavyweight champion, Gene Kaniski. We'll be back with more championship wrestling in just a moment.